Washington Special Envoy on North Korea says the U.S. continues to seek a peaceful resolution to the nuclear standoff with the rogue regime. Despite North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's repeated moves to antagonize the United States and its allies. The entire North Korean Olympic delegation is now in South Korea with exactly one week to go before the Pyeongchang Games get underway. As North Korean flags fly the athletes' villages, the world's athletes start moving into their new home for the next few weeks. Plus, a French dairy giant is at the centre of a baby milk scare with dozens of babies infected with salmonella after drinking tainted baby milk formula. The company says some of its products may have been tainted for more than a decade. Our top story this morning, though, Washington's top envoy on North Korea has confirmed that all options remain on the table in regards to solving the North Korean nuclear crisis. However, he says the Trump administration is not close to triggering military action against the regime. Our Park Jong-hong starts us off. The U.S. point man on North Korea says he believes Washington is not close to taking military action against North Korea. However, Japan's Kyoto News reports that Joseph Yoon didn't rule out the possibility, saying all options are on the table. The special envoy told reporters in Tokyo on Thursday that the U.S. dialogue channel with North Korea remains open, and he urged Pyongyang to directly show its intent to stop missile launches and nuclear tests. In regard to the recent inter-Korean dialogue ahead of the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics, Yun welcomed the developments, hailing them as highly significant. The special envoy expressed hope it was a signal of things to come, but said any talks with Washington would have to, quote, be about steps North Korea would take toward denuclearization. Yun is slated to meet with his Japanese counterpart Kenji Kanasugi on Tuesday in Tokyo to discuss North Korea issues, including ways to prevent the regime from circumventing UN sanctions. In the meantime, Russia has voiced its support for South Korea's efforts to improve ties with North Korea. Seoul's foreign ministry said the endorsement came from Moscow's top nuclear envoy, Igor Morgulov, in his meeting on Thursday with Lee Do-hun, special representative for Korean Peninsula Peace and Security Affairs. They agreed to cooperate to make the current, quote, positive momentum lead to contacts between the U.S. and North Korea and the eventual resolution of the North's nuclear issues. They reaffirmed that the nuclear issue should be resolved peacefully and Seoul and Moscow maintain a close level of communication at various levels. Park Jong-hong, Arirang News. Now, U.S. President Donald Trump has started using North Korean defectors in his North Korea policy. The Wall Street Journal reports that a case in point was the story of Ji Song Ho, who had suffered greatly at the hands of the regime. He was singled out as a guest during President Trump's State of the Union address early this week, and the paper said Trump chose the human rights activist to raise alarm about North Korea. In a video report, the Wall Street Journal noted that Ji, uh, when he was pointed out, stood up and held up his crutches, receiving the longest standing ovation during the president's speech. The report noted that many North Koreans are defecting to South Korea and explained these people are some of the few informants who are aware of the grim realities in North Korea. There has been no U.S. ambassador uh, to South Korea for over a year now, and the post seems set to remain vacant for quite a while, with the White House dropping its latest nominee. The unexpected uh, move raises more questions, especially pertaining to Washington's policies concerning the Korean Peninsula. Our Guan Zhang Ho reports. The withdrawal of Victor Cha as the Trump administration's nominee for the U.S. ambassador to South Korea has brought surprise and concern to the Korean Peninsula. The reasons behind why the Georgetown University academic and former advisor to George W. Bush was dropped is unclear, but differences in opinion on issues such as North Korea and the South Korea U.S. FTA have been cited. An op-ed in the Washington Post on Tuesday, written by Cha himself, shed a little more light on those differences. Cha said he had warned the White House against a preventive military strike, saying it would risk hundreds of thousands of lives and that other options were available. 
It's highly unusual for an ambassadorial nominee to be dropped this late in the process, especially after Washington had received official approval from Seoul over his appointment. Cha's comments have sparked concerns that Washington's preparations for a military conflict are further ahead than previously thought. But observers say that although military options remain on the table, the current circumstances with Cha do not necessarily point to any imminent danger. He's not saying that the administration is going to do this, but that there are some people both within and outside of the administration that are con contemplating this idea. So yes, we should give some weight to the importance of um, the implications that may arise. But um, to say that this is what the White House will do, I think is going a little too far. The process of finding and appointing another nominee for ambassador to South Korea is expected to take several months, and the prolonged absence will continue to raise questions about communication between the two allies while the situation with North Korea remains tense. Seoul will likely keep a close eye on the situation, as any appointment could hint at the direction of Washington's future policies towards the Korean Peninsula. But it seems the Trump administration is willing to wait to find someone who will tow the party line. Kwon Jao. Arirang News. Now, North Korea is trying to pull some strings on the international stage to take the heat off itself a little bit. North Korea's Foreign Minister Ri Yong Ho has sent a letter to the UN urging the world body to stop the US taking actions that would disturb the thaw between the two Koreas. The regime's state run Korean Central News Agency said the letter was sent on Wednesday to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Minister Ri wrote that the international community looks forward to seeing a continued easing of tension on the Korean Peninsula, but the US is seeking to intentionally aggravate the situation with its strategic assets like the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier strike groups near the region. He added that the UN should not stay silent as the US plays a dangerous game and drives the world closer to nuclear war. A team of athletes from both Koreas came down south of the border on Thursday. South Korean athletes, after wrapping up their two-day training there, and a dozen other North Korean players invited to take part in the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics. Our Ji Myung-gil reports. A delegation of 31 South Korean skiers was flown back home from North Korea Thursday on a chartered flight. They were joined by 32 North Koreans led by the North Vice Sports Minister. Among them are 10 athletes who will compete in Pyeongchang 2018, including a figure skating duo, two short track speed skaters and three athletes, each in cross country and alpine skiing. Upon arriving in South Korea, the 10 North Korean athletes were taken to the athletes' village in Gangneung, where they will stay throughout the duration of the Winter Games. Twelve members of the North Korean women's ice hockey team arrived in the South last week to hold joint training with their South Korean counterparts. A total of 22 North Korean athletes will compete across five disciplines, making this the largest North Korean delegation in Winter Olympic history. On the last day of the two-day training Thursday, the South Korean alpine and cross-country skiers held joint training sessions, including friendly races at the North Mashingnyong Ski Resort. There are 10 slopes at the resort with a total length of nearly 18 kilometers. The luxurious Mashingnyong Ski Resort opened in December of 2013, which took less than a year to build, after the North leader Kim Jong-un ordered the construction in February of the same year. Kim, who is known to have been educated in Switzerland, is rumored to be keenly interested in skiing. Jim young Arirang News. Now, with the Court of Arbitration for Sports decision to lift the ban on 28 Russian athletes facing doping charges, the Russian Olympic Committee is now asking the IOC to send 15 of them to Pyeongchang. The ROC senior vice president says they have requested the IOC send invitations to the 15 athletes by no later than today. He added that the other athletes have either retired or have decided not to take part at the Pyeongchang Games. The CAS's ruling also reduced the bans of 11 other Russian athletes from lifetime bans to temporary bans effective for this year's Winter Games.
Now we're going to take a look at the stories making headlines around the world. And we start with a baby milk scare that is gripping uh, France. A company there, Lactalis, is scrambling to get on top of what is becoming a growing crisis with dozens of babies infected with salmonella after drinking tainted baby formula produced by that company. For more on this and other news, let's turn to our... Uh, no, Adam. So, Adam, some really scary revelations coming out. Um, it has also been reported that the firm has been producing salmonella tainted uh, baby milk for more than a decade. That's right, Mark. The crisis first came to light late last year. Between mid August and December, 38 so called salmonella agona infections were reported during that time, 36 of them clearly linked to Lactalis Milk, a group representing victims' families say at least 10 more cases are unaccounted for. The scandal led to nearly 12 million tins of baby formula being recalled worldwide. However, the issue dates back longer than most people thought. As you said, the CEO of Lactalis, Emmanuel Besnier, was quoted by French media as saying that the same strain of salmonella was also responsible for some infections back in 2005. The outbreak occurred at the Crown plant, then owned by a firm called Celia, which contaminated over 140 babies. Lactalis took over Celia in 2006, but the problem remained as 25 infants were infected from 2006 until the 2017 outbreak. Fortunately, French health authorities have said that all of the babies who fell ill due to the salmonella tainted milk made a good recovery. Several families have already filed complaints against Lactalis and others are also planning to take action against French supermarket chains which were selling recalled products. Some of the country's largest supermarkets have acknowledged that some of the baby milk remained on their shelves after the recall. As well as the recalls and promising to compensate affected families, Lactalis said it will permanently close the facility at the Crown plant. It has also pledged to reinforce controls on baby milk products and have tests performed by a second laboratory. In other news, a spokesman for the government in Myanmar says a petrol bomb was thrown at a lakeside villa of the country's state councillor Aung San Suu Kyi on Thursday. She was out at the time and no one was injured, but housing equipment was said to be partially damaged. Police are said to be searching for a male suspect and they have not yet commented on a possible motive. It was a rare attack on the Nobel Peace Prize laureate who enjoys strong domestic support, but she has been heavily criticised globally, uh, globally for failing to take a stand against army abuses against Rohingya Muslims. Another unexploded bomb dropped during World War II has been found in Hong Kong. The discovery coming just a week after one was unearthed in the same area prompted the authorities to evacuate 5,000 people. Our Eason Jai reports. It's 140 centimeters long, 45 centimeters wide, and weighs in at a staggering 450 kilograms. The ANM-65, made by the United States and dropped on Japan-occupied Hong Kong during World War II, was discovered at a construction site in Hong Kong's Wan Chai district as experts work through the night to disarm the severely damaged explosive. This discovery comes less than a week after an identical model was diffused in the same area. While it's not uncommon for unexploded armaments from the past wars to be found in the territory, a bomb disposal expert stressed the difficulty in diffusing such an old explosive. Because of the rain yesterday, the working conditions were, were not good. Um, because of the location, it was extremely difficult to be able to access it and because of the nature of the, the firing mechanisms, the fuses, one of which we couldn't even see, it was extremely dangerous for the officers who were engaged in the disposal operation. The explosive is known to have been made by the United States and dropped on Japan-occupied Hong Kong during World War II as the area was a British colony at the time and occupied by Japanese forces between 1941 and 1945. Hong Kong historians estimate that of the approximately 4,000 explosive, roughly 30 percent or nearly 1,000 were buried underground and are yet to be discovered. Experts say a large number of similar bombs may be buried in Japan's Okinawa, Cambodia, Laos and other regions that saw conflict during World War II. Lee Arirang News.
South Korea and China are pursuing an extremely similar economic policy direction. This is according to Seoul's finance minister. Kim dong yeon was giving a speech on Thursday before China's National Development and Reform Commission in Beijing, where he said the economic policies announced by the two countries are very much alike in that they both seek innovative growth. He also told Chinese officials that the two countries should work together with the goal of stabilizing and ensuring peace in Northeast Asia. The minister's remarks come on the back of difficult issues facing some South Korean companies doing business in China. The relationship soured after Beijing enforced punitive economic measures against Seoul over its deployment of the US THAAD anti-missile system. President Moon Jae-in visited a local solar panels manufacturer, Hanwha Q-Cells, on Thursday to show support as US safeguard measures seem to uh, will have a detrimental impact on the local industry. The president vowed to provide extra support to those hit hardest by Washington's move. Moon Gon Yong reports. South Korean President Moon Jae-in's first visit to one of the nation's top 10 largest firms, a local manufacturer of photovoltaic solar cells affiliate of a South Korean conglomerate, the Hano Group. The left of center president has been an advocate of the nation's SMEs over large conglomerates known as chebols in South Korea, pledging to abandon what he called the country's chebol-focused growth strategy. So the president's visit to this production facility of the solar panel maker Hanwha Q-Cells came as a surprise to many. <laughs> We enjoyed the largest market share in the U.S. last year. This year, we expect our U.S. sales to shrink by 50 percent from our initial estimates. The South Korean president was referring to the U.S. President Donald Trump signing into law last week a 30 percent tariff on imported solar panels, billed as a way to protect American jobs, but dealing a heavy blow to non-U.S. manufacturers of solar panels, including Hanwha Q-cells. Mr. Moon also vowed to speed up the use and development of clean, renewable energy in Asia's fourth largest economy. But the primary reason behind his visit to this conglomerate, the president said, was because Hanwha Q-Cells deserves praise and recognition for its job-sharing efforts. Upon agreement between the management and the labor union, Hano Cells recently added 500 new employees to its 1,500-strong workforce, while cutting down the average working hours from 56 to 42 hours per week. Our companies, if they work together, can work now, Korean tech giant Samsung has been ranked fourth in the world in terms of brand value. This is based on the top 500 most valuable brands, a list compiled by Brand Finance, a global brand rater. It noted that Samsung's brand value was estimated at $92.3 billion, ranking it fourth, up two notches from last year. The report highlighted the surge in sales driven by Samsung Galaxy products and added that Samsung's do-what-you-can't philosophy resonated with consumers. Number one on the list was Amazon, with a brand value of almost $151 billion, followed by Apple and Google. Not to be confused with market capitalization or enterprise value, brand value is defined as a marketing-related intangible asset. This is the value of the image of the brand itself as represented in the minds of stakeholders.
Korea's third largest political party took center stage at the National Assembly this morning to take aim at the Moon Jae-in administration in his policy speech. Kim dong chul the floor leader of the center-left People's Party, said the government has been pushing ahead with policies without communicating with opposition parties, experts or even gathering public opinion, which has led to confusion and uproar in society. For one, he said the hefty minimum wage hike and reduction in working hours that was initially supposed to help the vulnerable is actually hurting them uh, more as they're losing their jobs. The floor leader also called on the government to pay more attention to issues at hand, such as security and foreign relations, rather than focus on rooting out the corruption of previous governments. He also called on the ruling party to speak out against the administration rather than just follow its lead. Turning now to the recently ignited uh, Me Too movement here in uh, Korea, this following a public prosecutor who went public on cable TV with allegations that was, she was groped by a senior official and then uh, demoted after she complained. Uh, Cha Sang-mi gets us up to speed with the latest developments. The Me Too movement that started in the U.S. is now growing in Korea after public prosecutor Seo ji Young revealed her experience of sexual harassment within her workplace. And to complement the rise of the Me Too movement, Seoul court judge Moon Yoo Suk started the Me First hashtag, calling on people who witness sexual harassment to speak out to try and prevent it rather than being spectators. Seo ji Young, a prosecutor at the Changwon District Prosecutor's Office, on Thursday requested that the probe team protect her from rumors regarding her performance and work discipline after revealing her experience. She also said she had even received awards from the Justice Ministry for solid work performance. A special inquiry team headed by Chief Prosecutor Cho Jin was set up to probe into the alleged sexual misconduct case. Cho, at a press briefing on Thursday, said she hopes the launch of the inquiry team will serve as a chance for men and women to work as equals in a work culture. She also pledged to do her best to make sure Seo doesn't receive any secondary victimization. Gender experts highlight the seriousness of secondary victimization in sexual assault cases. The Me Too movement can bring forth a phenomenon in which the victim, although they haven't done anything wrong, ends up disadvantaged, especially in Korea, a very male-dominated and patriarchal society. Sa had posted on an internal board on Monday that she was groped by a then-senior Justice Ministry official at a funeral dinner eight years ago. Sa appeared on a primetime cable news program on Monday to make public her experiences and demand an apology from the alleged offender An Taegun, a former prosecutor. Her appearance sparked a public uproar with thousands of Koreans protesting outside of the court and signing online petitions on the presidential office's website demanding an investigation into the matter. Cha Sang-mi, Arirang News. Good morning. Temperatures will be slightly higher than Thursday, nearing the seasonal averages. Now, the readings got much more bearable, but it's still quite cold along with cold winds, so dress warmly. And as for the daily highs, Seoul will get up to 2 degrees Celsius, while Daegu and Busan will make it to 6 and 8 degrees respectively under mostly sunny skies. But expect to see snow late at night in the west, including here in the capital. And that will bring another round of fridged air to the nation, which will linger until early next week. And as for the weather outlook in Pyeongchang, the county had a bone-chilling morning today and the cold will get intensified over the weekend, but the skies will remain quite sunny. With that, let's take a look at the international weather for beers around the world. While most cities in the nation will be under plenty of sunshine along with bearable temperatures this afternoon, most of North Korea will still have colder highs along with snow in some parts. And as for the rest of Asia, China on Thursday kicked off the world's largest annual holiday travel with the start of the 40-day spring festival travel rush and about 3 billion trips are expected to be made. Dress warmly if you're traveling on Friday. 
Meanwhile, multiple flights in and out of Wellington Airport have been disrupted as gusty winds hammered the Wellington region on Thursday. And the weather is not going to be that generous today either. And heading to North America, Montreal will wake up to some real icy cold temperatures on Friday at a low nearing minus 20 degrees Celsius, so be prepared. And as for South America, winds will pick up in Buenos Aires on Friday evening. Taking you to Europe, Stockholm and Moscow will be snowy along with freezing afternoon highs. Lastly, to Africa, rain on Friday will bring down the afternoon highs to low teens in Algiers with a high of 13 degrees. And that's all the weather update for now. Well, that's where we're going to leave the news for now as well on this Friday morning here in Seoul. Our next bulletin is coming up at noon Korea times. So until then, goodbye. A village full of exciting sports. It's Pyeongchang. Shall we take a look inside the ice kingdom of sports?